Welcome back to Talk Therapy Channel on YouTube. My name is Tammy Fletcher. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. Today we're going to be talking about tools and resources for BFRBs for summer of 2017. Now some of these are new and some of them are just new to me, but they've been around for a while. About half of them I found through my own research and the other half came from my clients or from our group members in our BFRB support group. I'll go over several of the items and I will put down in the description bar below information about each one of them so you can feel free to look them up, read more about them, and in the comments section please feel free to add any ideas or suggestions of your own, whether about these particular things or things that you found helpful. I want to talk about an app first of all, and this is a wonderful app. It's designed for people with dermatillomania, but it could easily be adapted for any body-focused repetitive behavior, and it is called SkinPick. SkinPick is designed to help you become aware of urges, which is important because awareness really is the first step in reducing and eliminating any behaviors that you want to uh, decrease or stop and to give you a chance to do something else when you become aware of the urge. Some people like to keep a journal, some people keep track of those urges different ways. This particular app sort of has everything all in one. Um, it's got the days of the week, you can uh, mark down when you have an urge, when you do go into the behavior. You can also keep track of things like um, you know, how you're doing that week. Did anything happen that would contribute to the behavior? My clients love this app. They prefer it um, because it's on their phone. They would rather keep track of it there and they're much more compliant with keeping track of it on their iPhone than they are carrying around um, something that they have to physically write it down. Um, so it's one less thing to carry around. It's extremely easy to keep track of the behaviors and document them and then bring them in and show your therapist if you're in treatment. The only thing that I would say that would be a con or a negative about it is that the name of it is Skin Pick. Um, it's, very, it's not very discreet on the iPhone. Um, and I've had clients have to put it several pages back in their iPhone app so that people didn't see it. They were embarrassed by what it was called and that it was so obvious. They wish it were more discreet. It's uh, a little green icon with an S. Again, it says Skin Pick very visibly below that. Um, so. A few clients have mentioned to me that that made them feel a little bit self-conscious about anyone seeing their phone, particularly clients that I have that are teenagers. That said, the app itself is possibly the very best I have seen so far as far as documenting this behavior. It's free. Um, I'll put a link down below. I highly recommend you at least giving it a try, and I think most people will really like it. Again, if you pick your skin, pull your hair, whatever the BFRB is, um, is an excellent app, Skin Pick. Okay, I spoke in another video about coloring, and there was a coloring app that I shared with you. Today I wanted to show you a really good coloring book that a client shared with me. It's extremely well made, and if you are at all interested in coloring, this is one to have a look at. People say they find coloring to be relaxing, it can keep your hands busy, it's almost acting like a fidget when you're doodling in it. This particular company, the um, Author is Lacey Mucklow. Um, I believe she's an art therapist. They're called Zen Coloring Books. She has a whole line of them with lots of different subjects and you could just sort of look at what she's got on Amazon.com. I'll try to get some better screenshots, but they're just beautiful. Um, again, anything that you're gonna try to do to keep your hands busy or to reduce your stress, reduce your anxiety. If you don't like it, you're probably not gonna do it. You can't really force yourself if you're a person that thinks you might like to try coloring or doodling or anything like that, find something that you like, that you don't mind holding, um, that you like the pens, and that you really do look forward to doing it and you feel like it's a stress reducer. Those are the items that work. So this is one I think has good potential, so I'll put a link below for you to check it out. Okay, next we have an item that's on Etsy. There's a designer who sells on Etsy, and her name is Katie Rushing. Her Etsy store is called Therapy Journals, and I'll put a link below. Um, she makes journals for all kinds of different things related to therapy, or really just self-help. You don't have to be in therapy to use these. She has created 
mental health journals for life hurts is what she calls it. They're pre-made forms that she has designed. You can download them. They're extremely inexpensive. Uh, you can use them on your own or in conjunction with therapy. They address topics like anxiety, depression, abuse, grief, and skin picking and hair pulling. She's one of the few people that has actually addressed this. Her work is absolutely beautifully made. I'm not sure if you can see this. I'll put a screenshot. It's so pretty. If you're not someone who um, journals, this might get you to, to be that person. There are a lot of, uh, a lot of them are very easy to use. They're thought provoking. She kind of walks you through the whole process of documenting and keeping track of things. It can really help you get your thoughts flowing. Um, again, her prices are incredibly low. And I have, in my office, I've created supplementary materials like this. They're nowhere near as good as Katie's. I stopped using my own and now I use and I recommend that my clients go to Etsy and uh, take a look at hers just because they're so good. Um, I'll include a link down below to the Therapy Journals Etsy shop for you to check out, um, as well as a link to Katie Rushing on Instagram where you can get a look at some of the many different types of journals and sheets that she has created. Okay, the next item I am actually wearing today, and to be honest, I wear them most days. Like many of you, I have problems with my nails. Um, if I'm going to pick at anything, it's going to be my cuticles or my nails. And all my life, no matter what I have tried, my nails just don't grow very well. So for those of you who have body focused repetitive behaviors that include nail biting or picking, picking at your nails or your cuticles, even thumb sucking, um, right away this might be something that I think could help. Um, however, I think it could also deter people from picking at their skin or pulling their hair as well, and I'll explain what I mean by that. So these are, they're press-on nails. They're from a company called Manicure Expressions. Um, I saw them advertising on Facebook, and to be honest with you, when I saw press-on nails, or when I see that, I generally just skip on by. That's not something that I'm interested in as bad as my nails are. Um, but these were really pretty and they caught my eye and I kind of read more about them. So the more I read about them and I read all the reviews, I decided to purchase one box and just see how they worked for me. I wasn't thinking about my clients at all at that point. I just wanted to have nice nails once in a while and they seemed okay. Now I'm on maybe my 10th box and anytime I want my nails to look nice for an event or something, I put these on. Um, they're not like gel nails, obviously. Um, they don't ruin your nails. They're, um, they, don't, um, they don't ruin the natural, natural nail underneath and they could be trimmed or filed. They also aren't on like a gel nail where they're, you know, they're glued on so tight that you, you know, you're going to rip your nail off to take them off. But they're also not as flimsy as a typical press-on nail. But if you're somebody with a BFRB, they can act as any, any nails can, as a reminder for you when you're getting ready to pick or pull. Sometimes just having some color on your nails can act as a reminder, give you a couple minutes to choose a different behavior. But there's something different about these that I think is interesting. They're on and they're solid, they're on for sure. I've never had one fall off, but they have a little bit of wiggle to them. I don't mean you feel like they're gonna fall off, um, but they don't feel cemented on your nails like a gel nail does. It would be really hard to pick at your skin or pull your hair, hair with these nails on. You couldn't get the grip or the traction that you typically someone needs. And just that alone, I think, could be helpful. Um, I'm going to put a link below. This is kind of out there. I think it's outside the box in terms of thinking of things that might be helpful for BFRBs, but that's what I specialize in. Until we have a switch that we can flip that's going to cure these things, I'm looking for anything, anywhere that might help clients. Um, so I love these products. I, I wear them often. I love the company. They sent me some nails after they heard what I did to give my clients to check out and several of them are doing that now. So um, I highly recommend them and I'm going to put a link below. Okay, now the next thing is going to be under the category of educational toys. Um, this is Crazy Aaron's Thinking Putty. I can't believe I haven't talked about this before. I learned about this from Annette Pasternak, who's the skin, stop skin picking coach. 
Um, she and I have worked together a little bit. Her clients use this putty, and one of them I think recommended that they put little tiny seed beads in them that you can get at a craft score. They're little tiny beads, silver or different colors. They're I think they're preferable to something like Play-Doh or Silly Putty. Play-Doh to me has a smell that I don't like and most people don't like it. Um, I give one of these pretty much to each of my new BFRB clients when they come into my office. They're cute, they don't cost very much, you can get them on Amazon.com. Some of them glow in the dark, some change colors when you play with them. I'll put a little bit more information below. And the putting the seed beads in and picking them out is a good repetitive sort of fidgety behavior that you can do if you pick or pull someplace like in front of the TV. Okay, now I saved the biggest um, sort, or not literally, but one of the biggest things that's going around the community right now, but it was certainly the most highly anticipated for me and it was the most difficult to get. And that's the original Fidget Cube by ANSI Labs. I ordered this last September, 2016, and due to company errors and address errors, it took me seven months to get two cubes. So I will spare you all the details, but it wasn't pretty and I was extremely frustrated with the company. So in the meantime, as those of us were waiting to get our fidget cubes, several other companies sort of jumped in and copied the design and very quickly produced knockoff co copies of the fidget cube. They were available very quickly. Sometimes they were about half the price. Um, understandably, a lot of people bought those instead. Um, I did not. Um, I don't have one of those of the, of, the, of the copies to show you. I didn't buy one. I think that's kind of a rotten business practice, honestly. As frustrated as I was with ANSI Labs and how long it took to get this, I didn't want to give money to a company that would, you know, sort of jump on their misfortune and copy their design and sell it cheaper. So I didn't buy one. I've seen them though. My clients have brought them in and they're much lighter. They're flimsier, they feel like to me, the ones I've seen. Anyway. As frustrating as this whole process was, I finally got it and it is fantastic. It's heavy, um, it feels really well made. The little buttons like all do different things. This side with the five buttons, that blew me away. The attention to detail in this thing is incredible to me. Um, the few clients that I have that actually got one of these, they waited. They love it. They play with it. It's one of the things that um, you actually can easily keep on you. I think they, care, they sell a little carrying case, but you could keep it in a pocket or a purse very easily. I love this thing. That said, um, will it stop you for, from picking or pulling? Like any fidget, it works if you have it in your hand. Um, some people just don't find fidgets helpful. And that's okay. We can't just say that that's going to work for every single person. We don't know. But so far, everybody that I know that has seen one of these or tried one has liked it. I think they're pricey. They're about $20. They might be even a little bit over that. I don't know for sure. I haven't looked lately, but I paid $20 for each for two of them. But given how well made they are, I'm not sure I can say that that's overpriced. It's possible that if you're a person that's not into fidget toys, you might even like this one, again, because it's so well made. Was it worth waiting seven months and about three dozen emails and phone calls and getting my American Express company involved? Ugh, uh, I think it might have actually been worth it. Um, I'm a tough customer and I like it a lot. If you're thinking of getting one, I highly recommend. I would check into the company and see what their wait time is, but I would look for the real thing before I would buy one of the copies. That's all I have for you today. If you've tried anything that we talked about, I'd love to hear your opinion about it. Or if you have any other things to suggest for our viewers to try, please feel free to leave that in the comments below. I'll see you next time and thanks again for watching.